A lot of the software at your work is installed automatically in the background, but do you know how it's done? I will show you how to do this using Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobulman. Welcome to my training course video on SCCM, Endpoint Manager, and how basically server and client works when it comes to the software distribution. This is really simple to understand. It's kind of hard to explain though. But that's okay i'm gonna try my best and i guarantee you that you will be able to understand exactly how this works at the end of this video so first thing first i'm using virtual machines these are virtual lab machines provided to me by microsoft.com so i have a specific link where you can download all these virtual machines you load them up to into hyper v and you will have all these machines that are set up as you can see here i got client one through six here and I've got the content manager, uh, the main controller, and other servers that are required for this setup to work. Okay, just throwing that out there real quick. Again, if you need a link to this, let me know in the comment and I'll send you a link. However, keep in mind that you do need a hefty computer to run this with lots of RAM and processing power. All right. Also, if you got a moment in the comment below, please say hello, hi, or present. So that way I know you're interested in this type of content. So today we have a couple of things and I'll show you exactly how it's done. We've got Windows 11 machine that's also set up and we also got a couple of servers that are set up. One of the servers controls the software distribution and this is done to the, through the Microsoft Endpoint Manager. So as soon as this, as soon as this loads, this will allow you to basically control the software distribution of every client computer that's connected to your domain, to your network. So this is done in two parts. This is the front end of it. And if I click here on devices, you can see there are some devices that are online and they're active and we'll certainly get back to this. But I do want you to know from the beginning of this video that this is the software that controls this. And this is the software that installs everything on other computers that are on the network, including the client software that works together with this that allows it to communicate to that computer and send it software updates, Windows updates and etc. or just new software installations. So this used to be known as SCCM and now it's called Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager. All right, so now that we got this out of the way, let's see how it looks like on the client side. So I'm just gonna leave this up and I'm gonna open up this other machine that has client software installed on it all right so i'm going to pull it up and the client side of it is called software center and the client itself the, the executable is called ccm.exe so when i open this up you will see the software that's on the local computer on the local computer and on every other computer that's connected to your work to your domain to your network will have this software installed on it. And here is where you would control the installation or removal or updates or anything that's going on when it comes to the software that's being installed on this computer. All right, so here's an example of it. This is something that I've made. I've went ahead and recreated the environment that's similarly set up to my current job as a reference because it's fresh in my mind. I digress, this will be how it's going to look like on other businesses as well just maybe different icons and whatnot so this is something you would pull up on a local computer that will allow you to reinstall programs here's a good example of this here's google chrome if i click on this you can see that the google chrome comes up and this is the installation this is the software package for google chrome and you can see that's already installed and if you look on the left up here you can see that the google chrome is installed here just by looking at that icon if i click reinstall i can simply reinstall and it will basically automatically reinstall google chrome so that's great and there are a couple of ways to go about it as well so if i go click back on the applications here application tab you can see there are other things here like putty putty is used to you know for some other systems it doesn't matter i'm not going to get into this but it's just another software that's installed on this computer and it's being pushed by remember 
by the endpoint configuration manager, right? So the endpoint configuration manager and the name itself, it controls the endpoints and the endpoints in this case are these other computers that are at the end of the, the network, if you will. All right. So the next tab here is updates. What you would see here is typically Windows updates and whatnot, but you could potentially see some other updates as well. So if there is anything available that hasn't been installed, that is pending the install, it will show up here. Right now there is nothing and that's fine. If you click on the operating systems, this would have the list of the similar things when it comes to updates or software. Installation status, it shows you what has happened recently. And you can see here that the recent thing that is was installed, and that is Google Chrome and Putty. All right? So this is just installation of the status of the software that's being pushed to your computer. And we got things like device compliance, and this is basically just to make sure that everything is okay when it comes to the compliance settings between the server and the client. And then we've got other options here. So this is basically just the hours that are basically business hours, and then you can make some settings here. But we got also power management here. You can say do not apply power settings from my IT department to this computer. We got some com computer maintenance things and remote control. Anyways, I want to get away from this part of it for now because I want to show you how this works from the scratch. Okay, so now you know that the main computer that controls the pushing of the software is done by Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager, right? So this is connected to the server and this will basically distribute and install all the software and the software at the local level is being controlled by the client of this of the Microsoft endpoint manager that is called software center and this is how you would install it at the local level all right I hope that's easy to understand I know it sounds like it's complicated but it's really not you got a server which is controlled by Microsoft endpoint manager that sends the software to the other computers and the other computers install that software by using locally installed piece of software that works with that is called software center all right so the things i'm going to concentrate on here are directly going to be related to the software distribution and for those reasons i'm going to point and only talk about things that are directly related to that because there is a lot to talk about and we can certainly talk about that in the future video but this directly pertains to tech support that you will most likely be doing at first so again we are looking at the microsoft endpoint configuration manager which controls our devices right so this is why i'm highlighting devices here first because we're going to concentrate on that so here is a device that we just looked at. So let's just kind of stick with this one. It doesn't matter. This GW1 is basically a host name for the computer that we're looking at here. The green check mark means it's online and it's active, as you can see here to the right. So what does active mean? It means that the client that's installed on it is active and it's talking to the Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager, which is great. That's exactly what we want. However, we have all these other computers that are not, they don't have a green check mark, right? CM1 is fine. And then we got client two and then client one. This client two here means that it's offline. That means that the computer itself is literally offline. That means it's not connected to the networking. It's not turned on. So if I go back to my Hyper-V here, you can see that the client two is turned off that's its state it's turned off it doesn't see it but you can see that it can see a client one even if the client itself is not active it can see all these other computers that are running including cm1 dc1 gw1 and inet it can see all of these it can see all of these but it can also see whether the client again that software center software center that's installed locally it can tell whether it's active basically whether it's installed or not. All right. And here is uh, client one. This is the one we have. And you can, you, can, you can tell that it doesn't have the active indication here. That means the client software is not installed on it. So we're going to install it so this client one can receive software updates and software installs and everything else. 
After we do that, we're going to create a software packages. We're going to install that as well. It's going to be a great video, I promise you. Very educational. So we're going to install client software on it. So how difficult is this, right? Well, it's super easy, actually, unless there's something wrong. So what you would typically do, you would look up the host name. In this case, it's client1. So we have it up here. So I'm going to, this is Windows 11, by the way. So I'm going to look at the system and I'm going to look up its name. And it says here its device name is client1, right? Then you can see that the client1 is part of this domain, which is called corp dot c o n t o s o dot com right so it's client one we have it up and if i go to the start menu and if i look at all apps you can see that the system or software software center excuse me is not installed on there that means the client software is not installed and this is why there is no green check mark now, what you see here is something else we're definitely going to talk about. This called this thing called Client Center for Configuration Manager. It's going to be a very important thing that we talk about here shortly after we go through these other steps. All right, so let's install the Client Center. So let's go back to our server that controls this, which is this here. And we're going to simply right click it and we're going to select Install Client. Now, this is the process you would push the client to and it's just simple just you know next type of menu right so it's basically guided type of thing so i'm just going to click next and you can just change some settings but you can say here allow the client software to be installed on the main controller blah 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 this is what's typically done and that is to install the client software from specific from a specified site right so this is what i typically do that means that this is set up so that there is a copy or at least there should be a copy of client software for that they can be pushed automatically to these computers so and and i say automatically because this is supposed to happen automatically for every computer that's connected to the domain so as soon as microsoft End Conf endpoint configuration manager and its system sees that a new computer is added to the domain it's supposed to automatically install clients on them why this didn't happen here it doesn't matter because it's a good learning experience, a good learning opportunity, I should say. So we're going to leave it this. Install the client software from a specified site. There should be a copy of it. That's what that means. There should be a copy of the client uh, software, which is, again, called ccm.exe. And we're going to click Next. And it says here it's successful, including domain controller, blah, blah, blah. It says it here it's successful. So now let's see if it's actually doing it. So if I go to this computer, and I will know if it's actually installing it. And this, by the way, may take up to half an hour to install, but that's okay. Sometimes it's less. I mean, it depends. I'm going to look at the task manager to see if there's anything in the background going. And sure enough, I don't see anything that's happening right now. So I don't see any install of ccm.exe going on here at all. There is no installer happening you know how usually when you're installing something you see like an installer running in the background it's not working right so why it's not working i think it's because it's finicky when it comes to windows 11 at this point maybe there is a fix or whatnot but i have a manual way to install it. and there's a specific thing you have to do you can't just download a version of ccm on from the internet and install it you have to get a specific version so for those reasons we're going to manually install a client just so you see how it's done in case you come across this issue all right so what i'm going to do i need to get a copy of ccm.exe client and this is going to be of course on the main server that is right here right so this is the server that distributes all of these things so it should have a copy of it so this is where you would find it. it it hopefully it's installed the same on your computer but if not just ask your co-worker if it's in a different place but for me default location is windows c but for me it's under program files let's see here if i can actually remember microsoft configuration manager client here it is this is what i want so this is ccm setup.exe. Excuse me, I said ccm.exe, but it's actually ccm 
setup.exe. This is the application that we want. This is the client that we need to install. So what we're going to do is create a copy of it and copy it to that computer. And we can just see dollar inside, see dollar into that remote computer. So again, I did a copy of it. So entire folder here, and this one is called client one. So I'm just going to do backslash backslash client one backslash C dollar sign. And I'm just going to copy it here into the root of C, which is perfectly fine by me. Once it copies over, which should do it here in any second, let's switch over to the client and we're going to go open up our root of C and look for this folder. And here it is. Here's our folder. It should be copied by now. And so I'm just going to right click. I'm going to right click and run it as admin. I'm going to run it as admin because you need to do that in order to make changes to your computer. Now I'm logged in as admin, so I didn't get any pop-ups asking me to provide admin credentials, but to prove it to you that it's actually happening, I'm going to open up a task manager here and we can find that it's actually installing it in the background. Here we go. So it's installing this visual C++ stuff, uh, redistributable software is basically, these are prerequisites to run this. So it's happening right now. And, uh, you know, I'd say, well, it depends. Hopefully it does it soon so we can continue the video, right? So I can show you that it's installed. <laughs> uh, let's see here. It, I know it takes a while, but let me see if it, the, the icon at least came up. All right, there it is. It finally installed part of it. It's still not finished installing because I know it's, it's going to take a while. It's been five minutes, but if I try to open it now, it's just going to say it's not going to work. Most likely it's going to give me an error uh, because uh, yeah, it's it's probably going to error out because it's too soon for me to open it. Well, maybe not. All right. So <laughs> I'm glad to be wrong in this situation. It usually takes about half an hour. Admittedly, I have an i9 computer, so maybe that helps. All right. So it's installed. And just, to, just so you can confirm here, well, you saw that it's a new install here, but we are still at that client uh, one computer just to prove it to you here. All right, we're going to go to the system here and here it is. It's client one and here is our software center and here it's recently added software center installed on my computer. So this computer now under applications should receive the same software that is installed uh, that is available for the other computers too. But again, there's some kind of an issue with the Windows 11 that I would have to look at. So in this case, if you don't see anything when it comes to applications and you know it's supposed to be there, well, it's either one thing you've recently installed new cl the, the client software on it and it's not uh, caught up when it comes to the updating of what needs to be installed. And you can fast, fast forward this. And this is done through control panel. So if I open up my control panel here, control panel there's going to be another software that is going to be installed every time you install the client so now that i've installed a ccm setup.exe it installed software center and it also installed this thing called configuration manager which is part of that the reason this is basically used to basically kick off and refresh the policies when it comes to the software. And this is done through the actions here. So the actions tab, and this is how you would basically kick it into like overdrive or into a next gear to actually start to basically refresh and show the new software that's supposed to be added. So let's say you add new software to a specific computer and it's not showing up. It's like this, right? It's blank. Where is the new software? Well, this is how you would refresh it. So again, it's through control panel and then configuration manager properties. And this is what I usually do. I would kick off and this is basically a script, sort of like a GP update or when you do flush DNS, it basically resets it and checks to see if there is new software available uh, that is subscribed to this computer, meaning that it's there's a new software that's being pushed to it. 
So if I just click on this application deployment evaluation cycle and then click run now, or you can do, let's see here, software inventory cycle. Uh, let's see what else can we do? Software update scan cycle. You wouldn't make a mistake if you actually went through all of these. And these can take a few minutes to update, right? And once they finish updating, new software will show up. All right. And you would get a basically pop-up notification. It would say new software is available. All right. So let's go to a one that I already have it installed so we don't have to wait. And that would be on this one here. So now we know how the server and the client part of it works when it comes to installing and distributing software. And it comes to mainly about distributing the software, right? But there are a lot of other things you can do when it comes to this type of stuff. And that is basically create new software packages. And we're going to do that here. We're going to create new software package. I'm going to show you in real time on how it's refreshed and added. So if I do a refresh here, remember that was a client one. If I do a refresh, it should see that there should be a check mark. Whoops. Let's do this here. Devices. There it is. Client one now has the client installed. And you can see there's a green check mark. Check mark with a green circle is there for our client one computer because we have installed the client. And now we can, you can tell that it's not active yet but it can tell that it's installed. And this is where the problem lies with that Windows 11 machine that we have to do something or maybe it takes time to install. Anyways, I wanna make this, I wanna move this video along. We're just gonna concentrate on the ones that are working. In this case, we're gonna just work with this one here. Why not? This one's called GW1 hostname. All right, so now we know how the client, client part of it is installed to distribute the software to it. And this is what we're going to concentrate on. Yes, if I click on client here, if I right click it, excuse me, we can do a lot of stuff in it, like run scripts and you can send specific scripts that you have pre-made and this and that. There is a lot here. We can start, for example, resource explorer, remote control. We can initiate remote assistance. You know, we can access or use just a remote desktop client all kinds of other things but this video is for software installation and distribution so we're going to concentrate on this on today's video all right <laughs> you know what to do if you want future videos and if you want me to expand on this so we're, let's now learn how to actually create a new software package that we're going to push to one of our client computers and i'm going to show you this real time all right so we're going to click on software library within Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager. So it's right here, right? So under assets and compliance, we were earlier at assets compliance. Now we're clicking on software library here. And we're going to go to application management and we're going to use packages for this demonstration. If you look over here, you can see that our Google Chrome is present and then our putty release uh, putty release. I don't know why I said putty release. It's just putty, but it's a release 0.78. Anyways, this is the stuff that we see over here. So this is one of our client computers and we can see that there's our putty, right? That's the same thing we're looking at over there. And this is our Google Chrome. And here it says persistent attendant. We're going to talk about here, talk about that here in a moment. All right, so what we're going to do is, you've guessed it, we're going to create a new package and we're going to create a package from definition. Why definition is because this is going to be a defined package that we're going to download. It's going to be very specific. So what we're going to do here, we're going to download another software that's kind of common that you be used by Windows computers. And that's going to be I don't know, let's think of something here. We're going to use, I think I'm going to try to do Windows, uh, let's see here. I think I'm going to try to go with Adobe Reader MSI. I'm going to type in MSI because we need Microsoft package to do this. Adobe Acrobat Reader, sure, let's do that. We're going to specify Windows 10 sure why not it should work fine here select language english select version read 
reader DC. All right, we're going to download this and we're going to extract. Hopefully, we're going to be able to extract an MSI out of this executable. We'll see. All right, so I've downloaded it and I'm going to just right click and see if I can extract it. Oh, maybe not. I may have to download a 7-zip or something like that. Well, in that case, let's just install 7-zip, right? Download 7-zip MSI. Just to get this going, here we go, 7-zip.exe. Here we go. We need an MSI. We're going to download this, all right? Because it's MSI just stands for a Microsoft uh, package installer or whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, so here is our 7-zip package. We're going to install 7-zip, but let's kind of stay organized. We have to stay organized because if you're going to do this as system admin, we're going to have to say organized. We're going to copy it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it in the same folder where I usually keep my packages, and that is Windows C, and then under packages. And I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it 7-zip. I'm going to enter it and I'm going to paste our MSI package and Windows installer package inside of it. One thing to keep in mind is make sure that this packages folder that has all of your installation media, or I shouldn't say installation media, that's kind of misleading, installation files, executables, MSIs, or whatever else that you have in there, make sure that the security is set so that the domain users are allowed to read it and execute it. Same thing for domain users and domain computers. That's very important to have this there. So that way, whatever's inside of these packages can be read, right? Because it's readable and it can be executable. And it can also be copied over. If you read something, you can copy it over, right? So you don't need full modify. You don't need full control, anything like that. We just have to make sure that under security here, we have the main users and the main computers added as read and execute and you can obviously do this like this so if you just do a domain type in here and just do check names it's going to pull up a bunch of things that you can choose from just make sure that you add the main computers and the main users right click ok apply ok and then make sure they're added in there so they can read the new packages so they can read in their case our 7-zip and so they can copy it over to a um well point distribution distribution point we'll let's talk about that <laughs> i promise it's still going to be simple to follow all right so just to kind of reiterate this is what we did we right click packages and we're going to create a package from definition and i'm going to browse it and yeah you're right we're going to browse into our new 7-zip folder select our 7-zip windows installer package we're going to click open and here it is right we're going to click next and then we're going to say this package does not contain any source files that's not true we're going to point to the <laughs> file source files always always obtain source files from a source folder because i want these source files meaning this um, this package i want it to be found and i want it to be read and i want it to be copied to a distribution point which we're going to talk about next so i'm going to click next and here it says specify the package source folder, right? And we're going to specify the folder that we just used. I'm going to say local folder on the site server. And I'm going to click browse here. I'm just going to click select folder because it automatically defaults to it, right? So if you click browse, just click select folder immediately and it's going to default to it. Or you can navigate to it, but this is what it is, right? So we're good there. So we're going to click next. We, then we're going to click, this is just to confirm what we did. Click next again. And we're going to uh, do a little bit more here when it comes to uh, deployment, when it comes to pushing, as they say, when it comes to pushing off the new software that we've just installed. All we did right now is just create a package. All we did was just create a package that we're going to push later on, which is now. We're going to do it now. <laughs> Anyways, here's our 7-zip right here that we've added. You know, it's that's all great. So now we're going to right-click it. And we're going to deploy it, right? We're going to deploy it. So we're going to have to do some things here. We're going to click for the software. This is just for general information. We're going to click on this. And this is basically what tells you to, gives you an option on how to install it, right? If you 
do a per system for example per system that means per a computer for per entire computer what i want you to concentrate on is whether it's attended unattended or if it's uninstalled if you set it to per system in this case attended that means it's going to start to install it but you have to be attended that means you have to be present to click next and go through the menus to install it now if you want it to be unattended you can certainly do so and it's going to silently install it this is what you normally want this is what you normally want in a business type of environment where you don't want the user to even notice that anything is going on that means unattended also known as silent install and of course you can send uninstall persistent uninstall to remove it if this is what you want so we're going to leave it at persistent attended because I want you to see that it's actually working. That means we're going to get a pop-up. We're going to have to go through the menus to install it once it's pushed to that computer. So I'm going to leave it per system attend. I'm going to click OK. So and the next part here is collection. So we're going to specify what kind of collection it is. Meaning who are we going to push this to, right? Then we can specify different types of computers and systems, right? So this is self-explanatory. In this case, I'm going to just say all desktops and server clients, right? But if you want to specify something else, you can certainly do so. To keep it simple, we're going to do all desktops and server clients. So that's very easy to understand. We're going to click next. All right. So here is our distribution point. What are distribution points? Basically a place where uh, a copy of this executable or in this case in this case this dot msi package is going to be held so that way it can be accessed and then again copied over to the local computer for install for the install so in this case you can specify distribution point or you can specify distribution point group uh, the way this is set up and the way i like it here is specify distribution point group because it's specifically set up for that in this case so again so distribution point is just another place where the content, the executable, the program is copied over to so it can be accessed by client computers later on when it wants to install them. So again, I'm going to click add here. I'm going to select distribution point group here and I'm going to select here corp distribution point here, right? So I'm going to select that and I'm going to click next. All right. So here is where we can specify some other things. It specifies the settings to control the deployment of it. We know the action is to install. We already told it that. Remember, we said it's going to be an attended, attended, attended install, right? And the purpose here is required. That means it's going to install no matter what. If I click on this and just say, make it just so it's available and don't install it right now, do not install it right now if I leave it unavailable, right? So this is what I'm going to do because I want to show you how it works. So, but you can set up to be required. Let's say it's some kind of an update, like some kind of a security update or whatnot. You might want it to be required and this and that. Just be very careful and keep in mind the times when you're installing this, right? Because you don't want to mess up production when it comes to people using the computers. You don't want to be a, you don't have a, you don't want to have a production impact. All right. And then we got send wake up packets. This is just to wake up the computer if the computers are set up like that. And then here it says allow clients on metered connections. Uh, anyways, that doesn't matter. These are just semantics. So I'm going to leave it at available. So all of that does is just going to show up in our software center on the client. It's going to show it up and say, hey, this is available. You can install it if you want. Click next. So here you can schedule it, right? You can schedule it if it's required. You can schedule it so you might want to pick times that are like not during business hours so past business hours like midnight or something i don't know so this is these are the options you want here i'm going to not touch this because i wanted to do now i'm going to do it immediately so i'm going to click next so these are basically things that you will allow to happen while the installation is happening so if you know you want to basically leave this like it is because you don't want to basically say you want to allow system restart while the installation of the, the software is happening. So don't check any of these things. So just leave it, uh, leave it as it is, right? 
how do you want this to behave based off your distribution point remember that distribution point group that i pointed to where it's going to make copies of this so that clients can copy it to their own local well this is the part of it this is what we set up and here is our first deployment option here and it says here download content from distribution point and run locally this is what we've set up so i'm going to leave it like that because i want it to download content from distribution point and run locally right that's exactly what i want the other option here is deployment option uh, that client uses distribution point from a neighboring boundary group we don't we didn't set this up we did not set this up so i'm just going to leave it as it is do not run the program because we haven't set up a neighboring boundary group meaning another location for a copy of this program so i'm just going to leave it do not run but if you if you set this up you can say download content do the same thing but this is not what we've done we've done the first part of it and this using distribution point group all right so i'm going to leave it at this i'm just going to click next and then i'm going to click next this is just to confirm all the things we've done click next all right so everything's successful here as you can see and i'm going to quickly go to our machine here for applications as you can see there is nothing going on here right now but we're going to go to our control panel i'm going to go to configuration manager again so we're going to kick it off we're going to kick it off i want you to keep attention to the entire screen here i'm going to make sure it's zoomed out so you can see so here are our actions now you can have a script that you can run so it does all of these at once which i will talk about here in a moment after we're done with part of it but right now we have to do it manually now if you like this will do it on its own at some point because it's scheduled to cycle these however uh, you you know in this case we're going to do it manually but what i was going to say is if you were to like reboot the computer it will do this as well so you want to say application deployment evaluation cycle let's run that let's do uh, file collection cycle and let's do software inventory cycle okay and i think that's the one that will do it for us so let's just give it a here a moment and i'm going to keep an eye on it we should get a notification here shortly that new software is available let's do software update scan cycle uh, some it just really depends it may take a while software inventory but you know if if you're not sure exactly like i'm not sure which one will kick it off here when you think about it logically right application deployment evaluation cycle should kick it off right basically refresh this but it's not doing it because it's finicky but my machine policy retrieval evaluation cycle could do it i don't know software you would think software inventory cycle would do it but it's still not doing it there it is it popped up <laughs> it says here a new software is available and here it is all right that's a pop-up and here is our seven zip here's our seven zip <laughs> uh, and uh, you can see that it's available to install we're going to click install and it, you get another pop-up download and installing software users will just typically just get this little pop-up and it says here downloading and installing software and that'll be it but remember this is uh attended uh version of it where i want you to see that it's actually doing it so we're going to do it next next we're just basically going to install 7-zip on here all right and that's that right installation complete but if we set it up to be unattended it would just do it silently and that would be that right so if we go back now we can see that we have all of three of these we can reinstall it and this and that and uh if we were to you know remove any of these if we want to if we have problems reinstalling or installing then there is other ways to troubleshoot there are many things we can talk about here let me touch on this real quick here if you're having problems removing these and if you want to reinstall this software i feel like it's important this is how you would uh this is how you would refresh it right if you want to remove 7-zip just out of the blue Matter of fact, let's just remove Chrome here. I want you to see it here. It's on the left. We're going to do manual uninstall of it. So instead of doing a repair, sometimes you won't get that option depending how it's set up. 
sometimes you will not have this option to reinstall it would just say installed and that's it right this would be grayed out if this is grayed out and you can't reinstall it you can manually remove it so if I do manual uninstall of Chrome if I do a manual uninstall on Chrome you see how it says here reinstall well we can refresh that we're gonna have to go back to our control panel here All right, applications, Google Chrome. You can still you can still see that it's reinstalled here, but like I said, it might be grayed out. So we're going to go to the configuration manager, and we're going to run our actions here real quick. This will basically run the cycle and see what's going on here, whether it's installed or not. And once we go through this here, and it actually takes. This will just basically go back to option just to install it. All right. I'm almost done, I promise. <laughs> There's a lot of these. You just never know which one of these will actually kick it off. It is finicky, but once you've installed it, it works okay, you know. All right, so let me see. Applications, Google Chrome. So let's just see what happens. See, it's just going to install it now, you see? Downloading and installing software. So, I mean, it just depends how it's set up. If you have an issue where it's grayed out like this, where it just says you can't reinstall it, if you don't have an option to reinstall it, this is how you would do it. You would basically manually uninstall it, and that way you can reinstall it if you don't have the reinstall option. Anyway, I don't want to beat the dead horse anymore, as they say. I'm going to go back and look at something else that i really wanted to show you so what i want you to show you what i want to show you is this thing called client center configuration manager so i'm going to run this as admin make sure you run it as admin after you install it on your computer what this is it allows you to remotely connect to the client computers and basically do the same thing we did without having access to the microsoft endpoint configuration manager if you are not a system admin and you don't have access to this type of stuff here, you can remotely access some of it and still control it. And I'm going to show you. It's actually really cool. So this is a manual install of it. It's called Client Center for Configuration Manager. And it's an open source program that is not necessarily made by Microsoft or anything like that. You can see it's made by you know this person here. Uh, but it is a verified software that is used by companies. And you guessed it. This is how you would connect to the client computer. So let's say you're just doing tech support and you want to connect and reinstall some software. You can connect to a remote client computer. And here's our same computer that we just worked on here. This is called GW1. We're going to connect to it right now. GW1. And we're going to just click connect. And it's going to connect to it. Now we're connected to it. You can see bottom here that it actually connected. And it tells you a couple of different things. But what, what, are we, what can we do here? There are quite a few things we can do. But let's talk about when it comes to the software. So we're going to click on software distribution here. Here it is, software distribution here. Applications, we don't have anything on their applications. Because remember, on our server, we do not have any applications set up. So right here, you can see there are no applications set up. So naturally, this is going to be blank, right, on our client computer. But if we go to advertisements, this is what the, when it comes to advertising, when it comes to the applications that are available to be installed, and you can see their package IDs and this and that. So we got Putty, we got Google, Chrome, and we got 7-Zip. Well, let's, let's do Putty, rerun advertisement, and we go back to it, it's going to say downloading and installing software and it's going to want to install putty again right so we're going to cancel out of that so this tool is really really useful so that's the advertisement and in under here you can also have scripts you can have scripts that are uh, that you can run that would execute certain things right when it comes to all of this software stuff here's our software summary and you can see the things that have failed that I've installed those things that I've just canceled out you can see that it failed right this happened just now and this is and this is something that happened previously here and here's another one that failed right so that's okay we that's cool to know 
and we got execution history and we can see that i've canceled that right here the ones the last two things that just came up user canceled the installation right so that's cool it gives you all this information all right so service window is just kind of a schedule it tells you when the service window is meaning when can this be installed anyways don't worry about that that's not too 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 useful in this case right so what's the other thing we can look at if we click on the inventory well i purposely uh click uh, skip the monitoring one because it kind of gets into other things that are not software necessarily deployment related so we're going to go to an inventory here and if you click on pending updates this usually shows windows updates in here and I guess it's possible to set up some other updates. But if you see Windows updates that are available in here, this is where they would show up. So we'd be under inventory, pending updates, and they would be pending usually Windows updates. They would see them in here. And you can manually right-click them and install like this. Right-click, install. Right-click, install. Or you can just select install all. Right? And then under all updates, you would see all the updates were, you know, installed and all that stuff. And then we got installed software. And here it is, 7-zip. Configuration Manager Client, Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and here are some other updates that went through. Remember that Visual C++ that, we, that I was talking about earlier, the 2015? Here it is. This is the thing I was telling you about when it comes to that client. Uh, you know, similar to that, right? And other things that we don't have to worry about. Okay, so what else? Let me see. What else can I talk about here that's kind of useful? So if you go to here under Agent Settings under agent settings and then you click on install and repair this is a very useful tool if you want to reinstall or repair a client on a computer so you can connect to a remote computer let's say there are issues when it comes to installing new software let's say it's failing to install updates and this and that here are a couple of things you can do and you can also push agent to it meaning that client here it is sccm agent you can actually do a repair of it right here. You can remove it or you can install agent, right? So you can do all this remotely without having access necessarily to the Microsoft Endpoint Manager, right? So you can do these things, which is really cool. Another useful thing that can help you here is like a restart a button. Don't do, well, I guess log off might be useful too if you want to log off all users. But if you want to do a restart, you can certainly do that as well. Or you can do a shutdown. Don't do shutdown because you may not be able to wake it up. So never do shutdown. Never do shutdown. <laughs> but you can do a restart. So here's our GW1. And let's see if we can kick it off. So here's our GW1 here. I'm going to click on restart. Okay, restart. Let's go back to it. Here it is. Did you see it? It went ahead and restarted the virtual machine. <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, so this is just basically telling me uh, my uh, Hyper-V virtual machine is not able to reconnect because it's rebooting right now. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Irvin, also known as Kabooman. Welcome to the second part of Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager training video. If you haven't watched the first part, please do so because it's very important. So that way you can follow along with this one. It is a continuation of that video. I will post a link will pop up on the right top hand corner if you want to check that out first. But also make sure you bookmark this one so that way you can continue learning. All right. In the last video, we talked about many things when it comes to Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager, the client side, the server side, and we also talked about how packages are installed and how they are configured when it comes to installing those packages. Today, we're going to talk about applications. Now, maybe you are asking yourself, well, what is the difference between packages and applications? When it comes to SCCM, which is now also known as Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager, which is the thing we're looking at right now, when it comes to it, it considers packages as basically something that is targeting the installation of the systems and servers. So for example, clients and servers, the computers, right? So it's basically the software that you're targeting the systems with so you're pushing the installation of the software to computers right you're targeting computers now when it comes to applications you're targeting users you're pushing and installing the software to users otherwise 
The difference is basically the identical when it comes to the MSI package itself. So for example, we have a 7-zip here, and which is under the packages. It's the same installation when it comes to this one here that is under the applications. It's just that the distribution is done differently, right? Again, packages for systems, for computers, applications is for users targeting users when it comes to installation itself, right? So however you prefer to go about it, however your company prefers to go about it, that's certainly up to you. All right, so today we're going to learn how to install these applications, how we configure these applications and how we can deploy them. All right, so let's look at an example of what happens when we have both set up. Here is the package that we've installed and that we've pushed to our client. This is a client computer. You can see here that it failed, but again, this is part of what we were testing purposely on the previous video, right? So here is 7-zip and I can certainly retry this and we can install 7-zip and this is the package portion of it. It comes up under the same part of it when it comes to the client under the software center. Here is the package and here is the application that we saw just there. So it's just different way of installing it. Now when it comes to installing the way we set it up here, the package here itself, if we retry it, it's going to give us more options when it comes to the installation. In this case, it's an attended in installation. That means you get a pop-up just like you would normally do if you're manually installing something and you would click next and you would install it. So this is the package that we're installing right here. You can also make this so that it's silent and that the user doesn't even realize that it's happening while it's happening. Again, this is targeting the systems, the computers themselves. Now I'm going to cancel out of this and we're going to go back and we're going to look at the user targeted one which is the application itself so we're going to click install and this one you don't have an option to make it attended installation because it's targeting users specifically we don't want the users and you can see it completed right there we don't want users to necessarily worry about the menus clicking next configuration and all of that that doesn't make sense for users to be doing this is why the applications option comes in place. So you can do this as well. So it's just a different way of doing things, but it's certainly there and it can be very useful at times. All right, let's see how this is actually configured. So how do we set up an application? I'm gonna show you this from the beginning to an end to ensure that it's done properly. So we're going to keep using the same client and I want you to keep in mind what we saw here back here when it comes to available applications. Here is our 7-zip and then we were going to make sure that our other application comes up and it's gonna come up just like this where it's gonna say new, but we're gonna customize a little bit to make it more fun, all right? So for our demonstration, we're going to use Skype because Skype is very common thing to install when it comes to the business environment, especially businesses that are concentrated on using Microsoft products. So we're going to have to set this up I have a copy of Skype.msi, which is Microsoft Installer Package. And not to, no, don't be confused now, it is a package, but again, it can be used for package or for the application install that we talked about. So we're going to set it up from the beginning, and just like we did in a previous video, we're going to go to our Packages folder. We're going to right-click, we're going to create a new folder, and we're going to call it Skype for Business. All right, we're gonna go inside of this folder and then we're going to paste our MSI. So here is our MSI that we're going to use for the installation of this. However, we're gonna to want to do something else here and then we're going to want to specify a pretty nice icon. So I already have an icon that we're going to use for Skype. So I'm just gonna do uh, copy paste, I'm sorry, cut paste and then we're going to go from there, all right. And I'll show you how to add this icon. <laughs> this is something fun you would do. You don't necessarily have to do it, but we're going to do it because it's fun. All right. So here is our folder with Skype package. The point of this so that we have a network location of it so we can be distributed to other computers or users, right? So we're going to have to have a network location for it. In this case, I just chose to create it within the server here for the content management, and that's fine, but you can put it anywhere else if you decide to have a server that is used for storage, that has redundancy, meaning 
you know, it can create copies of itself for the um, for the redundancy purposes, I suppose. So there are a couple of things we have to do. Here's our Skype for Business folder. We have to change some security and sharing settings to it. So here are the properties of this folder. We're going to make sure that it's shared and it looks like it is. And this is because it's inherited from our folder that is called packages. So if I go to the packages folder, we can see that it's shared already. So we don't have to set this up. The advanced sharing is also set here, share this folder. And this is why the folder that we just created inside of this is inheriting those sharing options. Now we do have to make sure that the security is set up correctly as well. And the point of it is to make sure that our package is, AB, is able to be read by the computers that it's going to be installed on. So here it is. We have to make sure that we have the main users. In this case, we are targeting users. And logically thinking, you would want to make sure that the main users have access, read and execute access to this folder. But we know that it's computers themselves that are going to start to initiate and also want to have access to this folder, right? Because we are talking about a domain environment. So we have to make sure that the domain computers are also set as part of the security and allowed to read and execute these folders. All right. So that's fine. We're already set here. All right. Now we're going to create our application and this is what we're going to use for that. So I'm going to right click the applications icon here, I'm going to select create application. All right. And we're going to leave it here where it says MSI file. You can choose different types of file. It doesn't have to be necessarily be dot MSI type of file. It can be all kinds of different things. You can see there are some other options as well, but we're going to stick with MSI to make it simple. All right. So we're going to find its location and it says here example and then it specifically tells you that you should be using a shared network path for this so if i click browse here and then i simply tell it well go to this here which is our packages and then we're going to click skype for business basically follow the path where it's on the root of c right we're going to get an error so if i click uh okay and then i click next it's going to give me an error it says specify a valid unc file path so what does that mean it's asking specifically what it says here under example it needs to have a server path for this uh, for this file for this installation why because it needs to be a shared server path so that computers on the domain and the network can access it not just root of c right so we're going to do that. And the way we're going to find out real quickly what the path is, we're going to open up our folder here where we have our Skype for Business. So we're going to right click our Skype for Business folder. We're going to go to Properties. All right. And we're going to click Sharing. And here's our network path right here. So we're going to copy that. So that's one part of it. We still have to tell it what to uh, what to install. In this case, we're just telling it the path of the folder. It says here Skype for Business, and that's the path, which is fine. We can close this. We're done with this here. So when it comes to browsing here and telling it what the network path is, we're going to paste that in right up here. So instead of the root of C, we're going to do that. And then we're going to just click the arrow here where it says go to to make sure that it actually opens up that path specifically. So if I click open here it's not going to work we still have to select the skype here which is, which is now under the path that we've just specified so we're just going to click open and there it is now it's pointing to a network path which is a shared folder so every time you share a folder you create a network path for other computers on that network to have access to it which is indicated by double slashes double backslashes so we're going to click next and it's going to accept that. All right. So this is just to conform, just to con not to conform, to confirm <laughs> that this is uh, correct, that the settings we have. And, you know, what do you see? Just the deployment type name, some product ID stuff. This is all good. We got the network path, which is the current 
content location of it and we've got some other things in there as well so we're going to click next and we're just gonna you know go through the menus here and you can change certain things here ahead of time we can also change them later so here is administration comment you can say this is skype for business right and we can say publisher is microsoft and you can fill all this out you can say version 8 8.92 and you can fill all this out depending on what the requirements are for your business you certainly don't have to but it's good to actually do all of this stuff right because we want to make sure we're organized when we're doing this type of stuff so if you're a system admin that's doing this type of stuff i highly suggest that you do all of this all right and then we got a specified installation program for this application required installation rights so here it is here is our installation program what you see here is something that you would do when it comes to invoking to install it meaning that this is exactly the command that would show up in cmd of course it will be silent so if you go to cmd command line and copy what we see here this command right and if we do this and we hit enter uh it's going to install skype which is basically telling it use this package to install it except it's going to do it silently whenever we set it up of course if you're doing this make sure that you navigate to the folder where this skype is otherwise this command won't work unless you specify a path again blah 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 anyways this is the command that's going to run in the background to install skype all right and it says here install behavior and it says install for system which is fine or you can do install for user specifically we don't want to necessarily leave it for install for user in case some elevated uh, privileges are required so we're going to say install for system what does this usually mean that means that everybody who uses the system has access to it but if we install it just for the user only that person that logs into that computer will be able to use it all right so that's what that is and it says here install for system if resource uh, anyways we're going to leave it install for system so that everybody who uses this computer is going to be able to use skype not just that one person that logs into the computer so we're going to click next we're going to click next for here this is just to confirm the changes that we've done we're going to click next all right so here's the last thing that basically just confirms all the things that we've done and it's all successful which is great we're going to just click close all right so here's our skype we've created our application right it's we've created our application we're going to do some more adjustment to it but let's just see what happens when we actually start to deploy it so we're going to right click it and we're going to select deploy now at this point you will see the difference between this and the packages deployment themselves so here is where we're going to start talking about users and how it's pushing to users rather than the systems so we have our skype which is the software that we want to install if we want to change this we can certainly change it to something else at this point if we want to but that's okay we're going to leave it at skype because that's what we just created under collection we're going to have to specify the collection so we're going to click browse and what is collection here it is users right and you can specify to do all user groups you can say specify to all users or you can specify to all users and user groups so here is that part of targeting users when it comes to installing the application so i'm going to leave it at that i'm just going to say all users and user groups just for demonstration purposes okay and then we're going to click next so at this point we have to specify where are we going to uh, send the content to for distribution where is the content destination where am i going to send this to so we're going to have to send it to a distribution point and from there it's going to be pushed and installed to the computers and users right so we're going to click add here i'm going to select distribution point group and i'm going to say corp distribution points so with dp here it says that means distribution points corporate distribution points so i'm just going to leave it at that again this is just the place where we're going to send the content to for distribution 
when it comes to down the line, right? Down the line when meaning to the users and computers. All right. So I apologize if I keep saying users and computers because yes we are targeting users however it has to be installed on the computers right so yes you are targeting users but you're also targeting computers at the same time because you have to copy the content to this computer and it's the computer itself that installs the software right so so i apologize if that's confusing all right so here are some options at the client point of view for the users if you will so we got the action when it comes to deployment, what's going to happen? We're going to select to install. Of course, you can uninstall it if you already have it installed. You can also uh, provide a purpose. For example, you can just say it's required. It means it's going to install it no matter what. Or you can just make it where it's available. We're going to leave it available because that's what we did in the last video as well. And it's fun to see that we can actually click to install it. That's what it is. It gives us an option to click it and say install it ourselves and then you can we can check do a check mark here where it says allow end users to attempt to repair this application i like to leave this in here so that whoever does tech support has an option to remove it you don't necessarily have to do it you can also remove and repair this application the other ways if you want to lock it down a little bit more you just have to do it in a roundabout way and I can certainly talk about that uh, in some future uh, videos. So I'm going to leave it at this, and I'm just going to leave an option, allow end users to, to attempt to repair this application. From my experience, that's usually never a problem. If a user is going to fiddle with this and mess around with it, then they really can't do much. They can just click repair, install, or whatever. You know, that's, that's the limitation of it. So here it is where you can specify the scheduled deployment. I'm going to do it now, but you can specify when you want it to be pushed. And you can certainly say schedule this application to be available uh, and or required at like certain times. If you want to say like midnight where nobody's using the computers or something, you can certainly do that. I'm going to make it so it comes up right away. And here is the user experience for the, uh, you know, for the users, specify user experience. And basically what it is, it's those uh, pop-up notification where it says your software is available, your software is installing. That's what this is. So it specifically says user notifications. And it's here it says display in software center and show all notifications, which is fine. We're going to just leave it at that. Other options are just semantics. All right. You can customize this any way you want. I just want to go through this and show you how it's actually fairly simple to do. And here it is, configuration manager. This is about the alert. And uh, you can certainly set this up if you really wanted to. I'm just going to keep going. Again, this is something you can customize for your company and how you want it to be run for your company as a system administrator. So again, this is a configuration uh, confirmation. Uh, these are the details. Are we sure we want to go with all of this? Sure, I'm going to click next. All right everything's successful this is great i'm going to close this all right so we are deploying it and i'm going to go to our client and we should be getting a notification here and if we're not that's okay we can go to our control panel configuration manager or we're going to cycle the uh, software deployment right so this is what we're going to do so i'm going to leave it here to the side so you can see i'm going to zoom out a little bit so i'm going to run all of these scripts here that should refresh and we're going to get a pop-up saying that we have new software that's available to be installed so i'm going to run through all of these inventory cycle uh, machine policy why am i doing this is because i want to trigger the installation of the software now i don't want to have to wait and these are just different options that you might want to do just to make sure it covers sometimes one of these will trigger it and the other ones will not so i like to go through all of these you can create a script that can be within the software center in here that you can just run which will basically do all of these things for you all of these actions so we're just going to wait here just a second here and we should be getting uh, a pop-up saying that we are getting new software here in a moment all right so here it is here is our skype 8.92 so it's available and we can see that it says new so we can click on it and we can say install right so that's great 
But however, I don't like this icon. I remember we I said that we were gonna change that icon. So we're gonna do that in here. <laughs> we're going to we're going to right click Skype here under applications. We're gonna go to properties. We're gonna change our icon so it looks prettier. And uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so we have a tab here under properties where it says software center. You know this because this is what we're looking at over there. We were looking at the software center, and here's here is option for icon. We're gonna click browse, and we're gonna browse our folder with the icon packages. Well, here it is. Oops, Skype for business. Here is our icon. Here's our Skype icon. Apply. All right. Okay. Let's see if we can get this to refresh. All right, there it is. We got our skype icon now <laughs> all right let's install it we're going to click install so yeah it's just going to be it's going to be a silent except for these notifications right so <laughs> when it comes to installation of it it's going to be silent it's going to download and install software and as far as user is concerned this is seamless they may not even notice these notifications we can certainly you know adjust them as well you know we can turn them off and here's what I'm talking about. You can have an option here now to uninstall it. You can disable these type of options as well. And let's just make sure that this is installed. Here it is, Skype on our left-hand side. We got Skype installed. All right. So there, there it is. That's that, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Let me know what you think of this. And if you want me to talk about other stuff, what's the next thing I feel like it would be important? Oh, yeah, the updates. So we can push updates. And this is done through here. So controlling uh, Windows updates, right? Windows updates, we can talk about how to install that as well. I think that's going to be my next video. So that's my plan, at least for that. And then I want to talk about scripts. We can see scripts right here, scripts option down here. We can create a script. Uh, we can certainly talk about that. So I have at least two more ideas when it comes to this, when it comes to this uh, series of the videos or this, I don't know, this uh, whatever. What do you call this? <laughs> series of videos. I don't know. Uh, anyways, so we can talk about that. And uh, yeah, uh, let me know what you think. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.